Um, hello everybody, my name is Yahya Isaou. I am a neonatologist and a pediatrician. And today I'm going to talk uh, about two-dimensional echo. This is the session number three of a series about uh, echocardiography for non-cardiologist pediatricians, especially NICU uh, physicians. And uh, uh, today we will be talking about the first part of two-dimensional echo. So my objectives with this session is to talk about general tips and uh, the transducer orientation. And also uh, we will uh, see two views, uh, the high parasternal and low parasternal view. Um, so to optimize the, um, the view, it depends on the machine. To do gain, closer view, contrast, getting better, it is a machine specific. So you need to spend time with the machine and you need to ask the specialist of the company to provide the machine. It's vital how to hold the transducer in an ICU is maybe less important um, in um, older children. And it's vital how to deal with the child because if the child starts to move and cry, you will lose the views. In generally, the cardiology have two main, four, four main areas where we can look at the heart and the, uh, these areas called windows and we have four main windows. It's very good to start a subcostal view, especially in older children, but in young and NICU and newborn, it's difficult because of feeding and it's causing discomfort and maybe maybe disturb and you losing the baby and you cannot finish the uh, scanning. So I usually leave it to the end. I either start as apical or, or the parasternal views. It's also very important for novice and beginner to orient the transducer in a right way. So always the marker on the transducer. That, you know, we have two types of transducer. We have the curvilinear, and this gives you more wide uh, image, and it looks like triangular on the screen. And we have also the linear. And also the frequency, the lower the frequency, the better the penetration, the higher the frequency, the less the penetration, the more superficial. So usually we use um, a frequency between probably in an ICU between and, you know, uh, between let's say four and 10 hertz transducer. So the important that the marker uh, when you are doing true sagittal to be up, and when you do a true corona, corona to be on the right. If you're using oblique, the right side take the lead, the, the upper part take the lead. So if you're doing right and up, then it should be to the right and up. If you're doing left and up, then it should be to the left and up. And you also need to orient the marker of the notch on the screen in the same orientation. So if using right, make put it on the right. If using left, the notch to the left, then put it to the left. And nothing wrong with keep it the same, but you need to probably label it or make sure that you understand that the picture is um, image oriented. Um, there are certain movements that you need to know um, if somebody instructs you about the uh, to start doing um, echoes. These movements are many. Uh, some of these movements you keep the transducer in the same position, other you move the transducer from the spot. So the first is angulating the transducer in short axis. So you angulate it in this way, right or left, up and down. Or you angulate in the longitudinal axis of the transducer. So you can call it tilt, but some people may call it other names, but it can be right, left, up and down. But also you can move the transducer, you can rotate, same position, you rotate uh, clockwise or uh, anti-clockwise, right and left, or you can swap, move the transducer to this direction, to this direction, up and around, or even you can move it oblique. Now it's very important to hold the transducer in a correct way. It's best to hold the transducer between two fingers, the index and the thumb, leaving the rest of the fingers relaxed and rest on either on the chest or on the ground if you're doing a little bit more um, to side views. You need to bend your elbow and rest the elbow on the bed or on the incubator. The incubator should be at your level. 
the incubator and the baby and the monitor cardiorespiratory monitor and the machine should be in the same direction same line so you see all at the same time remember you don't need to breast breasting more mean more uh, discomfort to baby but won't get less picture you don't need even to contact the skin you just need to contact the gel because the gel is making the contact so pressing more will um, uh, disturb the baby and uh, uh, you will lose and uh, baby will win because they will cry will move and then resting the fingers on the chest and holding the transfer from the tip like pen will move the hand with the baby and then you will have more kind of fixed scanning or fixed picture on the monitor the picture will not change remember to relax your elbow because when you don't see you will have a temptation to press more and remember to look at the monitor not on the baby when you do the scan if you don't see and the child is crying you need to stop um, comfort the baby maybe you give some analgesia sucrose maybe you give some pacifier or so or ask for help somebody to help you to hold the baby and, and comfort him or her uh, these are the basic windows we have the subcostal windows and we can see mainly the um, um, intraatrial septum but also we can see the right side view the left side view and other views uh, we have the cytos view we have the true sagittal we'll see the relation of inferior vena cava to the descending aorta and also we can see longitudinal view specifically seeing the inferior vena cava to the um, to the um, uh, right atria and also we can see the descending aorta and some of its branches um, the splanchnic and the uh, super mesenteric arteries and other for doppler we have the uh, apical view we have two we can cut it in long axis with the heart and uh, we'll see the left side and also we can cut it in a short axis we have two videos the four chamber and five chamber views we have the hypersternal we can see the uh, ascending aorta the pulmonary artery the ductal view but also we can look to the uh, aortic arch we have the lower parasternal we can cut it in long axis we can see the right side of the heart left side of the heart and when we move to a true sagittal we can see the pulmonary we can go for a short axis we can see first the pulmonary valve the aortic valve the mitral valve and papillary muscle and even the apex of the heart and the both ventricles and um, these are the four windows in short and we'll start with the first one which is the hyperaster in hyperasternal you put the transducer at the upper part of the sternum with the notch pointing up and the notch should be in relation with the the notch on the transducer in relation with the upper part of the sternum it should be in the middle and sometimes you move it a little bit by one or two millimeter to the left uh, it should be true sagittal as i said and directed up and the aorta will appear uh, to the right of the pulmonary artery and the pulmonary artery should appear in a short axis so uh, when you move the When you move the uh, looks like this, and when you open the heart, looks like this. So you can see that the aorta appear in short ax and long axis, but also you can cut the pulmonary uh, in, in, in short axis, and also you'll see part of the right uh, pulmonary artery because you are cutting a little bit to the right and in 2d views it'll appear like this you can see the air ascending aorta maybe you can see part of the aortic valve and you see the right main pulmonary artery being cut in a short axis when you do pulmonary artery view same position but you angulate to the right side to see more to the left very small movement barely visible so you angulate, you move the transducer to the right, so to angulate the beam a little bit to the left. So the ascending aorta will disappear and the main pulmonary artery will appear. When you cut, 
And this is the movement, and when you cut, it appears like this. So now you can see more pulmonary artery. You can see the right ventricle, the pulmonary valve, the main pulmonary artery. You can see the left atria, and probably you might see the mitral and the uh, left uh, ventricle. You can see part of the descending aorta. If you can see the descending aorta, you, then probably you are seeing the duct somewhere between the main pulmonary artery upon branching to and, and reaching the uh, descending aorta. So in 2D views, you looks like this. You will see that the uh, um, right ventricle giving to the main pulmonary artery through a pulmonary valve, and you can see that part of descending or transverse aorta and probably the duct is in here in between. To do the ductal view, you have to see the pulmonary artery and descending aorta. Once you see them, then the duct is in between. So what you do, you angulate more to the right to see more to the left, and sometimes you need to rotate uh, clockwise. So the notch move a little bit from true up to the left shoulder. Once you open, so you're getting more to the left, avoiding the uh, ascending and transverse aorta, going, cutting more to the left. And you will see that uh, the duct is in between the main pulmonary and descending aorta. Between this and this, the duct is in here. Once you open the duct, it will appear like this. So you can see that we are cutting the main pulmonary artery, and you're cutting the descending aorta. And you see, because you're cutting to the left, you're seeing more, a little bit of the left pulmonary artery, and you can see the duct is in between. In 2D views, it will look like this. So you can see the right ventricle moving to the main pulmonary artery, uh, through pulmonary valve, and you can see a little bit of left pulmonary artery and the duct between the pulmonary main pulmonary artery and the descending aorta. Um, to do the aortic artery view, it's a little bit more uh, complicated, um, so you need to swap the stump, moving the transducer up and to the right, then rotate to the left and angulate up. So, angulate, up, to see more to the left, swap to the right, to the suprasternal notch, on the right side, but the notch move a little bit to the left shoulder. Again, move it from suprasternal to the right side, angulate clockwise, so the notch looks like up and to the left shoulder, but you are on the right side, and you are angulating up to beam down. Once you open the heart, it will appear like this. This is the movement, sorry. And when you open the heart, it will look like this. So you will see the whole arch. You will see the great vessels here. You can decide left or right aortic arch. This is not the uh, purpose of this presentation to decide, but um, if um, and in two. view, it will appear like this. So you can see, because we are cutting more to the right, we are putting the transfer on the right, you can see right pulmonary artery, and you can see the aortic arch. If you have a doubt, or you cannot see, you can hyperextend the neck by putting a shoulder roll below the shoulder to hyperextend the neck of the baby, it will become more easier. It's also difficult in, in babies who is ventilated. You have to be careful not to um, and do accidental extubation. So now we, we talked about upper parasternal, we will talk about uh, low parasternal view. We have basically two axes, they have the longitudinal axis and we will, ha we will have the short axis. In longitudinal axis we basically have three views, the 
left side view, the right side view, and the pulmonary artery view. Uh, well, in the short axis, we have the aortic valve view, we have the pulmonary artery view, we have the mitral, and we have the uh, papillary muscle view. So we'll start by uh, low parasternal long axis view. And in this view, you put the transducer at the lower part of the sternum, oblique, with the notch pointing to the right shoulder. So pass the way. And always remember to hold the transducer between two fingers and the rest, the rest of the finger on the mattress on the ground or on the uh, chest of the baby and not press the transducer on the chest to cause pain. So if you are looking to the heart, so we are angulating down to see more to the left and that's what will appear. So you will see the left outflow of the heart appear in the middle. The most anterior part of the heart is the right ventricle and the most posterior part is the left atria. And you can see the left ventricle, left atria given to the left ventricle through mitral and you see aortic valve. And this is the orientation of the transducer. So in 2D, view, in 2D view, they will appear like this. Left atria, you can see also part of the uh, descending aorta, uh, mitral valve, left ventricle, aortic valve, and ascending aorta. And you can see the right ventricle, the most anterior part of the heart. To see the right side of the heart, you need to angulate up and to the right shoulder to see more to the left and to the left hip to see down and to the left hip. Angulate up and to the left, sorry, to see more to the right and down of the, of the right hip. Angulate up and to the left shoulder to see more down and to the, uh, up and to the uh, left, and to see more to the right, down and to the right uh, uh, hip. So when you angulate, you're angulating in this way. You're seeing more right side. And when you open the heart, it will appear like this. So you will see the most anterior part of the right heart is the right ventricle, taking from the uh, right atria through tricuspid, but also you might see the inferior vena cava in this view. So in 2D view, in 2D views, it will appear like this. You will see part of maybe of the uh, inferior vena cava, you see a tricuspid uh, right and atria given to right ventricle through tricuspid valve. To see the pulmonary, you need to move from longitudinal axis to true sagittal. So you need to rotate clockwise with the notch pointing up at the lower part of the uh, parastem. Clockwise rotation, same position. When you open, it looks like this. When you move, it looks like this. So we're looking more to the right ventricular outflow tract. We're avoiding other structures. When you open the heart, it looks like this. You'll see the most anterior part of the heart, the right ventricle, giving to the pulmonary artery through pulmonary valve. And you might also see the left side, uh, left atria, giving to the left ventricle through mitral uh, wall. In 2D, in 2D view, it will appear like this. So you see the right ventricle giving to the main pulmonary through pulmonary valve, but also you're seeing some of the left atria giving to the left ventricle. Now we'll talk about the short axis. So the short axis, same views, we can look at the aorta, at the pulmonary valve, at the mitral valve, and then the papillary muscle or the, like, the ventricle and interventricular septum. So we'll start by this, you see the short axis, the structure looks like this, depending you're angulating up and down to see like better which valve. So we'll start with aortic valve view. So from longitudinal short axis or from the pulmonary, you angulate, you rotate more uh, clockwise. So the um, uh, notch look to the uh, 
left shoulder and up the notch of the transducer. So once you move it, it will look like this. So if you remember the true sagittal pulmonary was like this, so now you are rotating like this, where the notch looks to the left shoulder and up. So again, this is the orientation. So you're rotating in this way, and you can go angulate up and down to see the structure. So rotating in this way and angulating up and down to see which one you are looking for. Once you open the heart, it will look like this. So if you are at the level of aorta, you will see the aortic valve in the middle of the heart. The, the posterior part is the left atria and the anterior part is the right ventricle. So these are the labels, you'll see the right and the aortic valve with the three cusps and you can see the right ventricle anteriorly taking from right atria to mitral, you see the left atria and some of the left atrial appendages. In 2D's view, it will look like this. See the aorta, aortic valve with three cusps, one, two, three. You see the right ventricle taken from right atria through tri tricuspid, you will see also left atria. And my, you might see atrial appendages in here. To do the pulmonary artery view, same axis, same position. So what you do is you angulate more to the right and more up. So you angulate more to the right and more up. So let's see the picture so you understand more. So what you do is you angulate the transducer down and to the left to see more to the right and up. Once you open the heart, it will look like this. This is how to move. Again, so you move down and angulate down to see more up and to the right. Angulate down and to the left to see more up and to the right. And in the 2D views will appear, you'll see less aortic valve, you see more that kind of aorta, but you'll see the pulmonary uh, valve very clear, opening and closing, you'll see the right ventricle from the tricuspid, taken from right atria through tricuspid, but also you see, because you are on the right side, you see right pulmonary artery, you might see left pulmonary artery, you see the descending aorta very clear, the descend of the pulmonary artery, but if you see the descending aorta, and probably the duct is somewhere in between. To see the mitral valve of the heart in short axis, same position, you need to angle to the left and downward toward the left flank. So here what do you do? You angulate to the right and up to see more to the left and down. When you are, when you move it, it will look like this. Up and to the right to angulate the beam down and to the left. Up and to the right to angulate the beam to the left and down. When you, once you open the heart, it will look like this. So now you will see like more mitral ball with you in short axis. In 2D views, it will appear like this. You can see the mitral valve, interventricular septum, and right ventricle. And this is the left ventricle containing the mitral valve. To see the papillary, you need to angulate further down and to the left by moving the transducer up and to the right. So here, what do you need to do? Move it up and to the right to see more to the beam to the left and down. Once you open the heart, it will look like this. You avoid the uh, mitral valve.
uh, muscle. In 2D views, appear like this. By this, I end the uh, uh, third session of basic uh, echocardiography for non-cardiologist pediatrician. Uh, we've talked about the first session of the uh, two-dimensional echo. The next fourth session will be the second session of two-dimensional echo. We will talk about subcostal situs and apical view. In this session, we finished the uh, upper and lower parasternal view. I hope you subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to see to get alert when new videos come up and have a good day. My name is Yahya Ifawi.